In terms of actually what drives the policy making, from, from your experience, do you think it's the political agenda that does make the driving, or is it the educational research, um, the issues that the educational people find themselves to research and develop? I mean, which, which is actually the main force? Well, it's, it, it's a complex interaction because, in truth, you know, we have a democratic process, governments get elected, they get elected on the basis of their manifesto, uh, they obviously want to implement the manifesto that they've been elected to, uh, to implement, and you know, carrying that out uh, properly is a, is, a, is a crucial thing that all of us as voters would expect from politicians, that they do what they say they're going to do. So fundamentally, that's the that's the sort of immediate driver. The question of why those issues are the things that they're focusing on, though, uh, is of course then very closely related to what are parents concerned about, what are uh, teachers and head teachers concerned about, and what is the research showing us. You see uh, now, uh, to a very great extent, that international evidence is beginning to drive uh, policy thinking to a much, much greater extent than it, than it used to do. Uh, and so that's an example of where new facts, evidence and uh, data can really influence the, the direction that people want to take. What is it that this audience can do to actually help people like yourself and help policymakers mm. who have to do that, that difficult job of um, interpreting government policy and government intentions and mm. putting it into practice? Mm. Well, I talked a little bit in, in what I said about, about some of those tensions because I think it's inevitable in this relationship, you know, however well it's working, that there'll always be points of tension and, and difference. Uh, and I think that's a good thing, that's healthy, that's part of what helps um, challenge policymakers and it's part of what helps uh, improve the quality of what, of what happens in, in practice. But, but overall, I think, and I, t I talked about a few of these things during the course of the uh, talk, I think it's very hard sometimes to have a sense of, uh, uh, you know, in the way that you would have in medical research, uh, a set of very clearly agreed methodologies which, y you know, people share and where you have people uh, working together and collaborating on agreed problems, which are also the problems that teachers face in the classroom, you, you know, and, and certainly in the medical research world, uh, practic uh, practitioners and researchers tend to be working on the same sorts of problems and, uh, and they tend to be the same people to a great extent. And I do think that there is something here that's quite important about the way that our institutions in education don't really support that sort of close integration of policy making practice and, uh, and research. So I think there are some things that individual researchers can do about the way they de disseminate their findings as clearly as possible, about the way that organisations like BIRA can very sharply summarise the state of knowledge, however uh, incomplete, and, and, and give it to uh, to policy makers in the clearest possible uh, way. All of those things are possible, but then I think there's a longer term job of, of trying to think through how our, institu our institutions could be different in order to really build that into uh, the way that policy makers and, uh, and researchers work together much more of the time. Which areas of education would you feel are the most needed in terms of good, robust research in order to address the kind of educational and social problems that the UK has at the moment? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a long list of them. And of course, having, uh, having left uh, my role in the Department for Education, in, in a sense, I now see very much firsthand in our schools, you know, many of which are, uh, are, are serving pretty deprived parts of the country, you know, some of what's, some of what's, um, some of what's really needed, uh, in, you know, from a different perspective again. And uh, I, I feel that most profoundly, education is, as it were, a people business. You know, it is about the quality of, of people you have in um, uh, in the classroom and therefore the, the crucial task of uh, education reform in a sense is how do you create the right approach to developing on a large scale greater professionalism in the uh, teaching profession, high quality professional development, uh, institutions which recognise, reward and promote high quality professional development and the right evidence base to support the right things being done uh, to promote uh, teacher skill uh, and expertise and use of the evidence base. And so to me, it's, it's in that area of 
you know, developing leadership, developing uh, uh, in-school practices, developing the individual staff. Uh, that's the that's the crucial area where developments come from, and you see in some uh, areas of uh, research, like assessment for learning, for example, that um, you know the, the research evidence you know drives huge programs and, and big change across the system, and um, you know building a really strong evidence base about the sorts of classroom practices and the sorts of out of classroom practices which make the biggest difference in different circumstances uh, is, I think, the, the most important single contribution that, um, that can be made in the short run to, to improving education. Um, but, I mean, there are plenty of others as well. What is the one theme or the one thing you'd like them to think about um, as they go about their future work, as they reflect on some of the other things you may have mm. said? What's the, what's the one key theme you'd like them to uh, take on board? Well, uh, I, I guess for individual researchers, it would be um, that uh, I, it feels to me as though um, uh, the idea that, uh, that research is useful needs to, needs to have much, much higher status in education research. Um, I recognise totally that there are plenty of other purposes of research, that there are good reasons why simply knowing and understanding things more deeply can be important. There are you know, pieces of blue skies research uh, which, which are important too. Uh, but uh, for me, the highest praise that you could give a piece of research is that was useful. Uh, because it being useful means that it affects what teachers then go on uh, to do and how well children then do in the, uh, in the future. And that sense of it was actually valuable to policy makers and practitioners ought to be you know, really very high praise indeed for research. And I'm not convinced that it is at, uh, uh, at, this, at this moment. So, so that would be the one message there. More, more widely and institutionally, I do think that this increasing sense that um, uh, we do need in the education world something like a Royal College of Teachers or, uh, or equivalent uh, is an incredibly important thing for us to start thinking about and start moving towards because having something which is in that sort of institutional way, in the way that would be the case in medicine, surgery and so on, um, uh, which can connect the evidence base with practice and practitioners and can play a leading role in creating policy on behalf of uh, the teaching profession and the education service in general seems to me a profoundly important thing and it seems to me that BERA uh, can play an important role in, in building such a, a strong and compelling institution.